So we're gonna do a brood check on one of my hens. Her poults should be 23 days old, which means they, or we expect them to be roosting in a tree or a low limb. But yeah, we're gonna go see if she has some poults. I am hooked on turkeys, like so much of the rest of the world. I went on a turkey hunt and that's really the beginning and end of the story. I was hooked, I loved it, and then had an opportunity to do a research project with turkeys. I was a research technician for wild turkeys um, in Missouri and then in Tennessee. Had an opportunity to do my master's degree at the University of Georgia with wild turkeys. That eventually led me here for my PhD. So this project specifically is looking at reproductive vital rates of wild turkeys. So that includes survival, nesting, brood rearing, and habitat selection. So year to date, um, we have trapped 246 wild turkeys. We've put out 246 GPS transmitters. And so far we've collected 1.39 million GPS data points. This is a directional antenna. This is what we use to do most of our tracking. And we were tracking the GPS collar of our wild turkey. These GPS collars are radio transmitters. And what that allows us to do is use a live beacon to track the physical location of the bird. We use all of that information to look at survival of the hen, survival of the nest, survival of the brood. And that's the kind of data that we will use to inform the state, give them some information about their population here in Western Kentucky. There's a strip of trees. We're expecting her to be roosted in there. And so what we'll do is we're gonna to try to find an angle to see her on the limb this morning. And what we're looking for is the bolts. We're gonna have this forward-looking infrared to help us with that. We'll be able to see her heat signature. In theory, it's really foggy and humid out today, so it might not work super great. We're gonna stay as far away from her as we can. This is gonna help us do that. So there's two ends in this tree here and one in the tree next to her. She can see us, she knows we're here already. We're checking to see if she has bolts. If she does, they're underneath her right now. One just switched to trees. All right, that was a bolt. There's at least one. We've got two birds right on top of each other. They're starting to move around a lot. Looks like they're trying to get themselves situated. There goes one. There's a pole and a hen and a tree and a pole that's somewhere in the shrub to the right. There's a pole just to the right of the hen. And I've got at least uh, three poles. Yeah, okay, four poles. Oh, there she goes. Whoa. One, two, three, four poles. Poles are still in the tree. Our hen flew down. There's seven, I think. Oh, they're flying down. It's nice to see. I'm just gonna kinda let them settle down before we get up and move. Her nest was right in front of us. I don't know if you can see those saplings that are between us and those trees, but her nest was right there underneath that. There they go. So that was a successful brood check. We had two hens and what we think are seven poults. So at the very least, that's three poults per hen, which is great. And we'll mark that on her sheet when we get back to the office and see her again in another week for her final brood check. So we're at Peabody Wildlife Management Area and this is the habitat that's very typical of this area. We've got a lot of open herbaceous communities, open grasslands, and some larger hardwood tracks. So most of our broods are using old disc blocks, fire breaks, anything that can keep that understory, that ground layer open. So we also check our broods every single day, even though we're not doing a like early morning counting poults. We kind of expect them to be in the same general vicinity every day. I just took two angles with the telemetry from a point along the road here and a point along the road here. All we're looking for, again, is that she's kind of just staying in the same area, doing the same thing every day. If she would have taken off and, you know, crossed a major highway or crossed a major water body with poults that are only three and a half weeks old, 
then I'd be concerned and then I'd be brood checking her uh, early in the morning tomorrow, but I'm not concerned. I am pretty happy with her and hopefully we'll get her last brood check here soon. This year we have currently 24 broods going. I don't have enough manpower and staff to do all of the early morning brood checks in a timely manner. So we also use game cameras, cell cams to help us do our brood checks. So we deploy those in areas that the broods are using and we can capture the timestamp on the camera and match that with the timestamp on their GPS collar to confirm whether or not they have pulls still. So we are about to do a nest check. We know based on the GPS data where this hen should be. So if that hen is out here and I am down here, I know roughly what angle that hen should be at. I should be able to hear that bird if I point my antenna at her. I also can pick her up, you know, kind of in this general pie wedge, we'll call it. And so I've recorded these angles. If I can pick her up anywhere between 20 and 40 degrees on my compass, then we'll go ahead and mark her as still nesting and still incubating. Today is her hatch date though. So hopefully if she's not up this morning, she'll be up this afternoon and we might get to actually go recover it. So she is up. But if she did hatch this morning, she probably is either in the process of hatching still or freshly hatched. I want to give her another couple hours to move away from her nest. We'll back around to her here in a few hours. So we are about to go in and do a nest recovery. All we know right now is that this hen terminated her nest. She should be still incubating. She should have been on for another week and a half, but she left yesterday. It looks like she left yesterday morning, according to her GPS data. So now we're going to go in and see what the cause of termination was, whether it was predated or abandoned. We expect about 60 to 80% of our nests to fail. It's unfortunate, but because we have this daily check-in with our nesting hens, we're able to get out and determine why it was terminated. So we can tell, okay, well, was it a predator? Um, was it abandoned? Did it get mowed? Having this fine resolution, like GPS data is so valuable because we can really accurately say, this is why the nest failed. Field snacks. Right here we have the nest bowl. And then what we can see here looks like a lot of breast and back feathers. Something probably took a dig at this hen while she was on the nest. Uh, like I said, she failed early in the morning according to her GPS. So it probably gave her a little bit of surprise swiped at her, she got away. We do know that she's happy and healthy. She's about a mile and a half south of here right now, hanging out with a couple other hens that did not nest. So it might look ugly, but she's okay. She doesn't feel sorry for herself. She doesn't have time. I'll document some photos for our archives and we'll also collect eggs for genetic sampling. And we'll also take a closer look at the indentation to see what kind of mesocarnivore may have taken a dig at her in this nest. All right, so we're heading back right now to go recheck the hen we checked on this morning. She was up this morning, so we're gonna see if she's still up and off her nest. If she's up, then we'll go check out her nest and see if it hatched. So 31 degrees which means she is right on her nest. Just means that she's back on incubating or she's back on supervising the hatching process, I'm not sure. We'll go ahead and we'll download her data, make sure that she is indeed incubating and isn't just behind her nest with her brood. So we'll check in on her and confirm with the house. Okay, so if she were up and moving, it would take a GPS point every 15 minutes. She is not up and moving. She's taking hourly fixed points, which means that she's sitting still and incubating, which isn't a bad thing. I'll let her take an extra day. So we'll try again tomorrow. All this data that we're collecting is gonna go back to the state so that way they can inform their management decisions and their harvest regulations, but it's also gonna to contribute to the larger body of literature on wild turkeys. So that way we can start really painting a picture of how this bird's doing across the landscape. And that's across the entire United States, not just here in Kentucky.